Hi everybody, my internet just crashed. I've no idea why, which means that we lost all your comments, I think. So, you know, if you're still there, if you just didn't disappear on me, if you held on and you didn't give up, we're still here, but we need your comments. We All of that stuff that you wrote in there, uh, we'd love you to do it again. Uh, so, um, Chris, how are we doing? Well, I think we got to give everybody a minute to end the last, um, let's call it, let's call it our first off the cuff. They need a minute to log back into this one. So um, we'll just wait. We'll be a little bit patient as they were with us and, and let them begin to log in. Okay. Um, I know Danny was on and I, and I had actually written down Danny's question from the comments Um which did not carry over. So anybody logging in now, we're so sorry for that technical glitch, but if you would put your questions in the chat room, we will try to play catch up. But Danny had said that um, they would like to be added to our healing list because they're going through some very difficult times. So they're happy to see you on there and they're asking for healing. Uh, well, absolutely. Of course, Danny, we will definitely put you on our healing list. Um, and um you know we'll uh, we'll send you healing every day and my team and i will send you healing every day uh those in the spirit world will be sending you healing every day that's how it works that's how our healing works so you know so please and please let us know uh, how you're doing and what you know sort of what's going on you, you're welcome to share with us if you want to email email uh, rosemary at rosemaryontair.com or Email Chris, K R I S, Chris at rosemountair.com. I can see, <coughs> excuse me, I can see people coming back on. I'm very sorry, but uh, hey, you know, these things happen and we lost our internet there uh, for uh, just a few minutes. If you made a comment or you had a question, or we've lost all of it because that's what happens when the internet goes out, everything gets wiped out. So if you would like to, Re uh, type in your question, your comment, or whatever it is. Uh, if Danny is uh, still with us, uh, we're sending you healing. Absolutely, we should send you healing every day. If any of you have a question or a comment, or uh, if you want to know more about us, you can go to our website, rosemaryontair.com, or you can, uh, especially if you'd like a consultation or if you'd like to know more about us you could uh, email chris, K-R-I-S, at rosemaryaltair.com. And, um, or you can just email rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com if it makes it easier for you. Either way, Chris is the one who answers all the emails. So, you know, so um, just feel free to email us and, uh, you know, let us know what's going on with you all. Chris. All right. Um... Danny's also asking for healing for her loved one named Patrick, and that's on our healing site now, so everybody will know to send healing. Okay, so, and, and anybody who wants to join in with our healing process, what we try to do, and if you go to YouTube, you'll see that we've put some things up on YouTube, Healing Hands Around the World. Wherever in the world you are at 11 a.m. in the morning, your time, you don't have to worry about connecting with me at my time, 11 a.m., wherever you are in the world, if you could just spare one minute, and that's all it takes. We call it our healing minute. We call it hands around the world because we have so many people from all over the world who join with us at that their time, 11 a.m. in the morning, just to spend a few, a few seconds even sending out healing or joining with us. And all you have to do is think, I'd like to join Rosemary in the healing minute. I'd like to send healing. And if you have somebody specific or special that you'd like to send healing to, by all means, you know, add that in there at that time. If you go to the YouTube channel and you check out my uh, channel and you check out, there, there are a series of, um, of uh, videos called Healing Hands Around the World and it tells you how to do it. So, okay, Chris, let's keep going, shall we? Yes. So... Uh, Chris says, welcome back. <laughs> and I can relate to Jennifer's question about her sensitive boyfriend. Since connecting with you, I am experience, experiencing a lot of touching on my head at night. Oh, so nice. this happens during night. And in the 
uh, let's see. And the amount of animals on my bed almost daily is becoming a bit much for me. It's overwhelming and I'm not ready to hear or see someone in the spirit world as I'm fearful of that too. So they're hoping you can speak to that. Okay, all you have to do if you don't want the visitations, if you don't want all of those animals on your bed or whatever, all you have to do is to say to the universe, to that God force which is out there, a bit too much for me, so you need to, can you back off? Or go away, or whatever it is, just be firm about it. Not ready for this yet. Uh, I love you all, but I'm not ready for this yet, so can you just give me a little more time? So that's all you have to do is just say no. Uh, it's that, honestly, it really is that simple. Chris. Sandra says, I was wondering what you, Rosemary, feel about automatic writing. What, what thoughts do you have about that? Well, you know, um, the good old uh, planchette, they called it. Uh, why? It's a French name. I've no idea. But anyway, the planchette, which means basically it was sort of like it's a you can still buy. You can go online and buy a planchette. Uh, it's like um, a, a wooden board or plinth, fairly small. Uh, and um, it's supposed to sort of be on some sort of rotating sort of ball underneath it. And it's on a, like a rotating thing. So it can move and turn and swivel a little bit. And the idea is that you put your paper on the planchette and you get your pen. And the idea is that your energy, your thoughts and so on, uh, connecting with your pen, connecting with the spirit world, connecting with the planchette, which moves and changes and moves around. Uh, the idea is that you can absolutely uh, create uh, writing, which is not written by the spirit world, but influenced by uh, our loved ones in the spirit world. Now, just to say, you don't need a planchette. You, all you need is a, a pen and paper and just sit very, very quietly. Uh, make sure that you've got a lot of paper because sometimes when you feel inspiration coming to you, it's amazing how fast that pencil can go. Use a pencil rather than a pen because it's easier to move across the paper. But it, it, I mean, I teach my students to do this. Um, I've done it myself a few times. Uh, it can be quite fascinating. Sometimes you end up, you look at what you've written, and it's total gobbledygook. And sometimes you look at it and you know that it's really inspired. And it may well be inspired because you're connecting to your own spiritual self. So you may have been inspired from within, from that spirit within you. Or it could be that many people in the spirit world have joined you and they are inspiring you and they're inspiring your thoughts. Remember, everything is energy. Everything's about energy. So you just need lots of paper, a nice place to sit. Don't forget the planchette. It's all, it was all sort of, you know, I, again, this, I don't believe in the paranormal. I don't believe in the supernatural. I believe everything is natural and normal and just a, 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 an everyday part of us. And um, so just sit there and just be quiet. Make sure the phones are off, though, please. Make sure, you know, put away all the technological toys. Sit quietly by yourself. Raise your level of consciousness. Sort of get yourself in a, I hate to say a meditative, a meditative state, but just in a nice, relaxed state. And then just think of someone in the spirit world who you might want to join you or you might want to be influenced by and put your... Put your pencil to your paper and just be patient and see what happens. Chris. All right. We have some new folks joining us. So okay. um, Loretta's saying hello. Hi, Loretta. And then Junior's on. We haven't seen Junior in Hi, a bit. How are you doing? <laughs> and Lana Key's um, saying hello from the Caribbean. Hi. Nancy's. <laughs> You know, we're determined to go out there at some point. You know that, don't you? We're just looking for invitations. Anyway, keep going, Chris. Nancy says, I'm wondering about astral traveling. I believe I have been doing this, and I'm not sure why. It's been messaging from people that have died like my father. Okay, well, different people consider astral travel in different ways. So, um when i talk about astral traveling i'm talking about literally leaving my body my spirit leaves my body 
and moves, travels through times, through space, and so on and so forth. And it's an amazing thing. If you are simply either in a dream state or in a, la or in a relaxed state, connecting one-on-one -on -one, uh, with someone in the spirit world, it is not the same as astral traveling. So it's very difficult to pinpoint what it is that you're actually doing. I don't know you. We, you've not said enough to me to be able to for me to be able to understand quite what it is. But astral traveling can be, if you're not if you're not careful, you're not paying attention. You always must remember to say your protective prayer. You all must remember always must remember to put yourself in a place of safety, because you know astral travel is basically the, your spirit using the etheric body, your spirit moves, leaves your body and travels. Uh, well, okay, let me put it this way so you understand it. I would not necessarily go to a railway station in New York City and just get on any old train with not knowing where I'm going. Now, some of you may be adventurous enough to do that. Um, I'm not that adventurous. I like to know where I'm going because I like to just make sure that I have some safety around me. So if you are thinking that you're astral traveling or that you want to astral travel, please do it in a sensible and a right way. Chris. Elizabetta says, I would like to know if there is a way to dream of my grandmother. Um, it's been it's since a long time that she doesn't appear in my dreams. Is she well in the spirit world? Elizabetta, I think that she does appear to you in your dreams. It's probably that you are so comfortable with knowing that she's safe and well, that maybe you simply are not aware of it. Um, I think you will see her again, but know that she is there and know that she is with you. Keep going, Chris. <coughs> Excuse me. Anne Mare says, I sure do admire you, Rosemary. Judith is on from Georgia saying hello. I, oh, I want to know why that lovely, lovely lady admires me. Uh, because, you know, be careful now. Don't put me on a pedestal. You know what happens when people uh, sit on pedestals? Inevitably, they fall off. So keep going, Chris. Carol's on saying hello to all of us. And um, Judith, thank you so much for using the hashtag Rosemary Altea. We love it when people remember oh, to do, do that. we do love when people remember to do that, yeah. Uh, Carol says, the interview went well, and we're talking money tonight. Does Gray Eagle have something to say about any of this? Oh, yes. Just keep going, Carol. You're doing fabulously. You're doing, we're so happy. Keep, keep going, keep talking, keep doing, keep moving well. forward. Don't, you know, what we have to do in certain circumstances when we're looking to change our lives or to better our lives or to make moves that we would normally be nervous of, we have to understand that we have the power. We have the power within us to change our lives in a very positive way. And if you understand that you have that power within you, you can achieve so, so much more than you ever thought possible. Carol, keep moving forward. I'm very proud of you, my darling. Right. I think I think this might be a good point where we're waiting for more questions to maybe touch a little bit on the ambition board and how that can help you move forward. Oh, well, yes. Well, I do this with my students all the time, and I do it with a lot of my clients too. If you... You know, if you're struggling, you don't quite know where to go in life, or life is not quite helping you out as much as you would like it to, uh, what I suggest people do is buy a nice big piece of card, preferably white, and get lots and lots of crayons, brightly colored crayons. Make a border around the card, maybe an inch or so, depending on the size of the card, an inch or two. Uh, and you make a border and you color bright colors and you can some people put moons and stars and some, some people put rainbows some people put flowers in there you just put plenty of squiggles and different shapes and things whatever but the border of your card must be very bright no dark colors uh, using golds yellows reds greens but bright 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 colors okay 
Then you need to sit down quietly and you need to think of the things that you would like to happen in your life. I'll give you an example, okay? So I'll give you an example of, of a, 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 a client of mine who had no money, zero money, no chance of getting any money. And, uh, she, you know, she was working in a job that was not great. So one of her uh, ambitions was to get a, a new job, a better paying job and a new job where she would be happy. The second was to have um, $5,000 in the bank. I can hear some of you saying, $5,000, are you kidding me? Far too much. But, but you know, that's what she wanted. So she put a new job, $5,000 in the bank, uh, a new house. And uh, the, when she meant new house, she didn't necessarily mean about buying a house, but moving house to a better area. So she had those three things and uh, she also wanted a, a new car. So you can only put up to maximum five things within the center of this card. But what you do is you get now a black marker and you list your ambitions in, 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 in the order of importance. So number one for this lady was a new job. Because a new job meant that she could perhaps achieve a $5,000, her new house and a new car, right? So order of, order of importance, the new job, number one. Then underneath, she put the others in order of importance. But she, you write them out, one, two, three, four, and you write them out in nice big bold uh, in the center of the card. Nice big bold writing in the center of the card. Then you pin it. You can put it up on a wall in your bedroom, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, wherever it is you want to put it, as long as it's somewhere, that, a room that you go into every day. And what will happen is, like any picture, any painting you might buy, you put it up on the wall, and when you first put it up there, you notice it, you know, you, you look at it, and you admire it, and you see it, and so on. But then after a while, you know, you don't see it anymore. It just becomes a part of the furniture, so to speak. But what is happening here is that your subconscious, every time you go into that room where that ambitions board is, your subconscious registers, registers your ambitions and helps you to drive towards that, helps your energy to drive towards that. I'm going to say that this particular client I'm thinking of, um, it took her about 18 months to achieve three of the ambitions on her ambitions board and she was heading very very strongly towards the fourth one so we use it we work with it it really honestly honestly works but you've got to be very thoughtful about it don't just put down any old thing be very thoughtful if you only have two ambitions that that's fine if you have more than five don't be tempted to put down more than five. My suggestion is three to four is, you know, what works for you. Because after all, once you've achieved those ambitions, you can always make another ambitions board with other ambitions later on. So choose carefully and choose the most important. But they really do work. Right, Chris? Yes, they absolutely do. <laughs> okay. um, I have a question. Oh, no, a comment from Ann Mayer saying, no, I'm not putting you on a pedestal. I'm just an admiration of your gift and your sharing of it. I'm sure it wasn't easy. Some people just don't allow it forth. Or is it inevitable it will come through? Oh, that's so, so true. I'm glad you I'm not on a pedestal. And thank you for saying all of that. Thank you for sharing that with us. I really appreciate it. Chris, keep going. <laughs> Carol said, oh my, I got the chills when you and Grey Eagle gave not one, but two thumbs up. Yippee, oh, yeah. I'm going for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you see, just at the point, and Carol will understand what I'm saying here, just at the point where you think that everything is coming to an end and it's just all completely a mess, something happens to change it and life can begin again. We love that when that happens, don't we, Chris? Yes. She said she's going to do the ambition board as soon as she can. I'm so pleased to hear it. Okay, keep going. Barb says, I, I, of, I often wonder what fun things you can do in the spiritual world. Can we fly, golf, ride a horse, 
play games, et cetera? I can tell you. Okay. I had a young, a young man, teenager he was, who um, his parents came to see me. Uh, well, let, let, me, let me do this. Okay. He, this young boy was executed by uh, some other teenagers who, because he did not do what they wanted him to do, they literally went into his house, dragged him out of the house, and execution style murdered him. Horrible story. This happened uh, in Colorado. Horrible but true story. And um, the parents of this boy, as you can imagine, suffered greatly. Anyway, um, the mother of this boy, um, she uh, she was uh, went for therapy, uh, help that sort of thing, and it seemed she stopped talking she, she i don't can't remember now how long it was that she stopped talking but she stopped talking for a long time and it was very difficult because she had another young son at home and she had her family and she had her husband so but everybody was so so f afraid for her and so worried for her because she just shut down and um one day she went to the therapist and the therapist was at her wit's end and didn't know how to help her and nobody else know, knew how to help her and the therapist said to her, she said, I want you to read this book. And when you've read the book, come back and, and, and see me. Um, so uh, she, she took the book home with her. It happens that some of you are going to know now, aren't you? You're going to know what I'm saying to you. Some of those, some of you will absolutely know. She took the book home and the, the, the book was called The Eagle and the Rose. Now, it's good that I'm telling this story in a way because... The Eagle and the Rose, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary of the first publication of The Eagle and the Rose. I know you don't think I'm that old. I can't, what can I tell you? Anyway, so here we are, and she had this book, and she read the book. And uh, at some point, she, as she's reading the book, she began to cry. And her husband sat next to her, and she began talking to him. And it was the first time she talked in a long time since this had happened to her son. So they, the two of them uh, searched me out is the best way that I can say it to you. They sought me out and eventually they came to see me and I was able to connect with their son. Beautiful, beautiful boy. And um, he was able to tell us all what happened and he was able to give his mother this absolute fantastic evidence that he had survived death. All right, so uh, now I'm going to say at least a year or so later, this same couple organized uh, for me to speak. Uh, and I went to Colorado and uh, they, they organized a, a, an event for me. And uh, afterwards, uh, and that was an amazing, that was amazing. I'm not going to tell you too much about it. Read the book, the story's in the book. Anyway. Uh, not the Eagle and the Rose, of course, but it's in one of the books. Anyway, uh, and so afterwards, after the event, I went out to dinner with this family. And uh, their young son, who uh, came with us, uh, not the one who had died, but obviously, uh, their younger son, David, came with us. Anyway, so one of the questions, we're all sitting in a restaurant, and we're ordering food and so on. Of course, they have a ton of questions for us. And they want to know what their son is doing now. You know, and I think we all want to know, what do we do in the spirit world? Uh, as you've just asked, what sorts of things can we do in the spirit world? And um, their son was a great, uh, living in Colorado, he was a great snowboarder. And so they wanted to know, the parents wanted to know, well, Rosemary, what is he actually doing now? And of course, the boy was standing right next to me uh, and he started to laugh and he said, tell them. And I didn't know that he was a snowboarder at the time. He said, tell them, I'm not snowboarding anymore. I'm cloudboarding. And you have this amazing impression of some teenage kids sort of not just snowboarding, but sort of whizzing through the skies uh, on cloud after cloud after cloud, and we all thought that was a really pretty neat thing for him to say. I'm not snowboarding anymore, I'm cloudboarding. Uh, so, Chris. 
All right. So Rachel's on. Hi. Rachel, Rachel says, I actually wrote you a letter back in 1999 oh. and you wrote me back. Uh, I still really? have that somewhere, probably <laughs> in one of your books that I have. So here's her question. How can we, how can we, or are we able to communicate with the other side? Is there a way for us to develop that? Yes, but I'm cautious about it. I don't teach people to uh, communicate. I don't teach people mediumistic skills because I think that it would be very irresponsible of, irresponsible of me. Um, what we do, those of us who are mediums, what we do is we not only touch people's hearts, we literally can, and I personally can only vouch for myself, I have literally changed people's lives. People have gone from, you know, uh, feeling one way, having a different faith in one way, uh, doing a different job, uh, being in a different environment, and they've literally, having spoken to me, completely done an about face, uh, a three, three, a one eighty or whatever it's called, and have changed their lives completely. Now, um, you may think that that sounds fantastic. And it is, except that I always have to make sure that if that is going to happen, so what we do is we touch people's hearts and we change people's lives, but we always want to be very careful that our influence and the influence of a medium is a good influence, a positive influence, but also it's a true influence. It's not something that we make up in our mind. You have to make sure that if you're going to do this, that you have a real and a serious and a positive connection with the spirit world. I don't just see people in the spirit world. I see them. I hear them. We have a conversation. We literally have conversations. I understand them. I'm able to ask them things. Of course, they don't tell me everything. I mean, you know, if I ask something, they don't want to answer it for whatever reason, then they're not going to. But if you can't be that clear and that precise, then don't do it. So I refuse to teach mediumship to people because I think it would be a very irresponsible thing for me to do. However, I am more than happy and have done so for many, many years. Uh, I teach people how to give healing, how to give healing to themselves, how to give healing to others. I had a healing organization for many, many years and we have webinars and even we have, if, again, if you go to YouTube, you'll see we do, we do uh, all kinds of things, healing. Uh, we, I talk to people about how they can, using visualization techniques, understanding energy and so on. I teach people how to give healing, how to extend their uh, level of um, understanding, their, their raising their consciousness. I teach people how to do those sorts of things. And you can go to YouTube and find some of those. We also are actually at some point going to be uh, doing more webinars uh, and helping people to discover about how they can develop that healing. But do be very careful, everybody out there. I know everybody thinks, you know, oh, she's marvellous and what she does is marvellous and all this. And yeah, it's hard work and it's tough. Please don't be too ready to jump in there and try to do it for yourself because you have to be so, so aware of the responsibility of what you're doing. Chris. Maggie's referencing Carol's comments about the two thumbs up and says, yeah. I could use two thumbs up from Grey Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we don't give them very often, Maggie. <laughs> you know, maybe around Christmas time. I'm laughing. I'm joking now. Maybe around <laughs> Christmas time. I'm thinking dark chocolate cherries. <gasps> yeah, maybe I'll give you two thumbs up for that. <laughs> Judith oh, says. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Judith says cloud boarding. I love that image. Yeah, me too. Um, so Matthias, Matthias, I'm sorry, I'm saying I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but was on before our little technical I difficulties. Matthias. I think it's a th with a T. M A T I A S. Yeah, Matthias, I think. I could be saying it wrong. Anyway, Matthias, carry on. Yes, Chris. So they say everything that was shared on the webinar made me think, 
cry, and laugh, different feelings. So I'm pleased to have attended because listening to others teaches me a lot. Well, thank you for saying that, my darling. I always say to people, even if you don't get a message one-on-one -on -one yourself, you're receiving messages all the time when you come to things like this. And so you've just proven my point. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for saying that. Chris. Laura says, ciao, Rosemary. Ciao. She, she's from Italy. Well, my, yeah. <laughs> my grandma has all of your books. She oh, bought it when my father died years ago and you helped her lots. So thanks so much. I feel oh. my dad close to me always every day alive in my heart. Well, th thank you so much for saying that. It's sort of, <laughs> it's so funny, you know, people say my grandmother and my, my grandfather, we know when it's, it's almost as if I'm so ancient. Uh, but as I've said, it is after all 25 years this year that we're celebrating the first publication of The Eagle and the Rose, but there have been many books since then. But yes, I've been doing this for a lot of years. And so, you know, we sort of have, it's amazing really, isn't it? The generations and this kind of subject totally bridges the gap of all of the generations. I mean, we, we get people of 18, 20 years old who, who are involved and interested and who come to see us and then we get you know people who have uh, in their even in their 80s who come to see us so it's great it's great because there is no age gap here i think we're all interested and we all want to know more about it dan says hey i'm a big fan from york have you ever been york are we talking york in england are you if if you're if you're talking york in england of course i've Dan, I'm so pleased that you mentioned it. Of course I've been to York. We used to go to York every other week or something. When I say we, my friend and I, we used to, it's a great place for shopping. Um, it also has the Viking, I don't know if they still have the Viking uh, exhibition going on there. They have lots of things. It's a, it's a very historic, very beautiful city. I would encourage anybody who has not yet been to England or is planning a trip to England, you've got to go to York. Uh, they have the old Roman wall. It's a, it's a, it's a wall. York is a wall city. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, and dare I say, even of course, being British, uh, beautiful people. <laughs> Keep going, Chris. All right. Loretta says, I was in the webinar last Saturday morning with you and my dad came through immediately. I am here to tell you, I feel so much better. You have helped my spirit to be light again. Thank you. Oh, Loretta, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for saying that. Great. Yeah, we do love to have people give us feedback on these things. We really do. Uh, nevertheless, whatever you say, I enjoy myself. <laughs> Excuse me, I enjoyed myself thoroughly. I think, Chris, you did too, didn't you? Yes, looking forward to the next one. Dan responded saying, York is amazing, isn't it? The Jorvik Center, yes. I love and appreciate it more every day. I'm in, indeed a beautiful York native. Oh, you are? Well, you know, I was supposed to go to, um, to England this year and what with COVID and all the rest of it going on and the world upside down and topsy-turvy, I didn't go. But I'm planning, Dan, I'm planning on going next year. So if you... Uh, you know, subscribe, or if you uh, sort of keep checking on my uh, website, and as you're a fan, you know, I should be in that area, because uh, I I lived in Doncaster for a while, and you'll know where that is, and uh, uh, York is one of my favorite places, uh, and um, uh, I have friends there who are planning on, when I eventually do go to England, there are friends who are planning on organizing events for me. How about that, Dan? Would you like to join in? Would you like Would you like to come in person now? Uh, and we'd love to have you. So keep, you know, keep us, um, keep, keep abreast of what we're doing and let us know. Uh, and uh, we'll let you know where we're going in England. Hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed really, really hard here, hoping next year. Okay, Chris. Rachel says, you are who actually inspired me to get my PhD in metaphysical science because I was so inspired to connect and understand the universe 
and energy and healing. I could use two thumbs up from Gray Eagle also. There you are. I'll give you them definitely. Wow. In the hope Good. that I'm on the right path. You, no, you don't hope. You know you're on the right path. You don't need me to tell you that you know within you that you're absolutely on the right path. Good job. Keep us posted with what you're doing, would you? Okay, Chris. Carolyn says there are many advantages to not getting a message during the webinar. Oh. I received a message and could hardly pay attention after <laughs> I was so busy digesting. <laughs> Yes, there is that. When you do get a personal message, it's kind of sort of blows your mind so much that you're not necessarily focusing on what else is happening or focusing on what else is, is uh, you know, other people's messages. So there is that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, uh, so if you come to the next one and you don't want a message, maybe you put it in the chat room, don't give me a message because I want to... I want to watch what's happening to everybody else. Chris. All right. Vicky says, and York has a Betty's tea shop. Oh, do they ever? Do they, is it still there? I wonder. Uh, we used to go to Betty's tea shop. You know, I have to tell you that Betty's tea shop is a little bit overrated. First of all, they charge a fortune uh, just for, just for a, a, a what do they call it? A Welsh rarebit, which is in anybody in any other language is a cheese on toast. I know it's got a slightly t little twist to it, but uh, they charge ridiculous prices because they deal with the tourists and so on. However, it is fun to go there, and um, you know they do some nice cream cakes. But you know when you can make your own. Uh, <laughs> I was talking talking to somebody yesterday. Um, about making cream horns and cream slices and many of you don't know what I'm talking about but if you're British you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey Junior, how, how do you deal with that? Do you eat? I like to fill my cream horns, a puff pastry, I like to fill them with a little bit of apricot jam in the bottom and then I put sort of fresh cream on and maybe a little sort of drizzle of chocolate over and I glaze them with, uh, with, with, with sugar and and he, oh gosh, I could just eat one of those right now. Let's not talk <laughs> any more about food. But Betty's Tea Shop is the place to go if you're in York for those sorts of things. But please do expect to pay over the top for them. They are fun though, and it is a great and a very historic tea shop. Chris. John says, don't forget Sonny Scunthorpe, LOL. <laughs> Which John is this? <laughs> this is John Tarn. Tarn. Come on, John Tarn, help me out here. Uh, you know, we lived uh, in uh, Wallaby for a while, which is just on the outskirts between, uh, where? where is it? Oh, gosh, my, I, once again, my brain's gone dead. But, yeah, so, <laughs> Sunny Scunthorpe is, that's what we used to call it, Sunny Scunny, actually. Um, and, uh, uh, yes, there are some fantastic places in England, and I still have friends uh, who live um, in Bawtree. I have a, a very, very close friend of mine who lives in Bawtree. I, I have friends all around that area. And uh, yeah, Scunthorpe, I can't recommend, don't go there on, a, on vacation, everybody. There's no way you'd have a holiday in Scunthorpe unless you just had really good friends who you could stay with and who could take you to places like York. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, John? I mean, help me out, John. <laughs> is that true or isn't it? <laughs> All right. Amy says, hoping our papa will visit us. I was told he is with us. You are a blessing. Oh, thank you. And of course he's going to visit with you. You just don't forget to pay attention. You know, you have to listen very carefully. <laughs> Keep going, Chris. We're having, uh, we're having fun on this off the cuff, right? <laughs> we are. Um, Annika says, thank you for your answer. I have not attended a webinar yet, but would like to attend in the future. Well, if you want to attend in the future, you need to go to the website. We don't actually have a date planned yet because, you know, we're sort of coming up to the end of September. Uh, I've only got another couple of weeks with my grandson and my daughter. Uh, so there'll be nothing planned for the next couple of weeks except of course we still will be doing our regular Thursday 
and we'll be doing our regular Saturday morning story time. Uh, so we'll be still doing those things, <coughs> excuse me, but when I get back to Florida, Chris and I are getting our heads together and we're going to be planning all sorts of events uh, coming into the winter months. So, um, you know, pay attention, keep checking with the website, keep checking in on us. We love it. We love it. We love when you check in on us. And if you want to know more, you want to subscribe, but you don't know how to, uh, email us, um, Chris, K-R-I-S, at rosemaryartair.com or rosemary at rosemaryartair.com. Couldn't be simpler. Keep going, Chris. All right. Um, I'll just give a couple more questions and comments because you've hit, you've <coughs> gone over your hour. Um, Dan says, Betty's is still booming, even though I've never been. And Scunthorpe or Blackpool, Rosemary, which is worse? Well, you know, when I was 17 years old, this, now this is a story for you all. Okay, for those of you who are not British, you're wondering what we're talking about here, but Blackpool is, I can't remember which coast it's on now. Can you believe that? Anyway, it's cold, It's but it's known for its lights and the lights go on sometime in October or November. I'm sure somebody's going to, to tell, tell me if I got it wrong. And the Blackpool, they call them the Blackpool Illuminations because the lights are stunning and startling. So you go there, it's usually winter time, you freeze, uh, but, and it's windy, but the illuminations are really worth it and people flock to this place. So when I was um, uh, 17 years old, I was still living at home, and I asked my parents for permission to go on a trip to Blackpool. It was a coach trip and it was so you had to get on the coach on Friday in the afternoon and it, uh, then they arrived Friday evening. You stayed in a B&B, &B, bed and breakfast, and um, you came home on Sunday and my parents absolutely denied me the permission. Uh, they're very strict. But, mm -hmm, uh, you know, every now and again, I would rebel and this was one of those times. So what I did was terrible thing and all of you children out there watching you never do this ever it's very bad to do this i should tell my grandson never to do this sneaky stuff anyway on friday morning i snuck out of the house with my little suitcase with my nighty and a couple of changes of clothes and so on and so forth and i met my friend and off we went on the coach and uh we went to Blackpool. Uh, I don't think I left my parents a note, but I think they got, when I didn't turn up, I think they knew pretty quickly where I was going, <coughs> or where I was, anyway. And I got back home on Sunday uh, in the early evening, absolutely dreading, 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 because, you know, I could have I had all sorts of things. You know, my parents were very, very strict and didn't uh, didn't stop at uh, beating when necessary, but <laughs> whatever. So it was a very daring thing for me to do. Now, did I enjoy Blackpool? Um, not so much because even having dared to go there, uh, I knew that it was the wrong thing to do. It was very, very naughty and I was not sure of my reception coming home. Weirdly though, strangely though, the reception was not nearly as bad as I anticipated it was going to be. I shan't tell you more about that, but anyway, Blackpool or Scunthorpe? I don't know. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> do I need to answer? Keep going, Chris. <laughs> John responded, yes, that's true. Not a lot here apart from the steelworks. I came to see you when you were near Brig. I was 19 years old and I'm 49 now. Gosh. And you used to 30 years, 30 years on. And I still look the same, don't I, John? Now, why did you come to see me? What did we do? What did we say? What were you there for? Because you were very young. At that age, not, not many youngsters of that age would come to see me. Did you come with your mother? Did you tell me? I want to know. Uh, if you can't tell me today, um, email me. I want to know. I want to know. And uh, and please, you know, stay in touch because, uh, you know, when I come to England, hopefully next year, I want, let's have a reunion. Let's have a Brits reunion, shall we? Chris. All right. Judith is responding about your puff pastry. 
Oh, yeah. um, puff <laughs> pastry is an art so delicious and you can do whatever you want with them. Well, eating, eating puff pastry is preferable. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what else I'd do with it. You know, let me just say something. As a cook myself and hearing people, chefs and so on, who seem to make a mystery of so many things and they tell you how difficult so many things are, if you follow the rules, puff pastry is actually quite easy to do. Uh, if you don't follow the rules, you'll mess it up. But, you know, as with everything else in cooking and as with everything else in life, if you follow the rules once or twice yourself and know how to do it, then you can even mess with the rules or make your own rules or make new rules. But I love making puff pastry from scratch. I know it's easy to buy it now. You can get it frozen and all the rest of it. But there's something really, really fun about making your own puff pastry or flaky, flaky pastry sort of right from scratch and it's easier than you think chris okay carol's saying i had a visitor last night in my kitchen and i saw it was my dad did he want to tell me something oh come on carol just that he loves you just that he's with you just encouraging you to keep going doing what you're doing chris. that was the last question rosemary Okay. All right. We don't have any response back from John, I guess. No. Uh, <clears throat> well, maybe next time. We will do more of this off the cuff stuff. We've always, we've been doing it since before May. Uh, we love doing it. And, um, you know, despite the fact that I've got my foot up on the cushion here, I'm going to ho hobble into the kitchen in a minute and make a drink for myself. <laughs> anyway, poor me. And poor Maggie, you're hobbling more than I am, Maggie, if you've broken your leg and I've only fractured my foot. Come on. That was Josephine. Oh, was it Josephine? Why am yes. I thinking Maggie then? Oh, well, because we mentioned Maggie's name recently. Oh, anyway, whoever it is. <laughs> okay, so um, we love doing this. I especially, especially want to say thank you to Chris tonight because I know it's been a tough time for you, Chris. I know that you're struggling, but I know that you love doing these things. And where would we be without you? And she did the webinar on uh, Saturday all by herself. Did an amazing job, as always. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you all of you for joining us. We shall be back on Thursday morning uh, with our show. You get to ask us questions, all that sort of thing on Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So. Uh, if you're not sure what that means, 11 a.m. New York time or on the East Coast of America, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, then we shall all also be back on Saturday, Saturday morning, again at 11 a.m. Uh, Saturday morning. Uh, and we'll be doing a story time. I'll tell you a story and then you can make comments or whatever it is. And usually the stories are pretty good. I think so anyway. So we'll be doing that on Saturday morning. And we probably will be doing at least one other off the cuff, but off the cuffs are as is, you know, part of the course because that's what it means. Being off the cuff, doing something off the cuff means doing something when you feel like it or as and when or hey, let's just do this or why don't we just do that? So off the cuff. So we'll be doing another off the cuff sometime during the week also. So keep posting, keep watching for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you. You're such beautiful people. I love, love, love the fact that you all join us, and I love the fact that you're so, so respectful of each other, and I just, we just love doing these shows. So thank you to all of you for joining me. Uh, I'd like to say a special thank you, of course, to Great Eagle, as always, to my right side, uh, helping us out with this. Um, so until I see you again, please, all of you out there, have a very very blessed rest of the day or night wherever it is and have a very very blessed rest of the week everybody bye bye